Hi guys, I'm Shmi, and today I'm visiting Jemka Lexus in Reading, who have invited me to come down and take a test drive in their new RCF. The Lexus RCF, of course, a newcomer to the segment, the 2 Plus 2 Sports Car Coupe, very much up against the BMW M4. But this is going to be a walk around of the car, we'll talk a bit about the design, then we'll hear how it sounds before jumping in for some driving impressions. So, the RCF, powered by a 5 litre, 471 brake horsepower V8. Finished here in azure blue, which looks absolutely stunning. It's a brilliant colour. The design is very aggressive. We'll take a look around. They're only going to be 200 in the UK, so it's a very rare and exclusive car. 19-inch wheels. I love the design on the rear lights, the way they stick out, but also swoop in and around there. Taking a look lower at the rear, we've got the exhaust tips, which sit diagonally mounted above and below each other. RCF badge there on the rear boot. Keyless, of course, the key's in my pocket, so we'll just unlock it and pull the door open. Option spec on this is incredibly high. Very little you can add to the car. Cool interior design, very reminiscent of the LFA with the raised center console with the air vents across the dashboard. Nice fit and finish. I think there are only four options you can add to the car. The standard car, £61,000, and the carbon edition with carbon roof and extra parts is 68000 But on top of the prices, the only things you can add are the torque vectoring differential, a button in there. You could add a sunroof up top, adaptive cruise control, and then it's just the metallic paint. So every car is finished to a very high specification. We've got these vents behind the front wheels, all for airflow. As we come down the front, the lights split into two parts, the main headlight that swoops in and around here, and then the additional LED part underneath, all sort of combining with this front grille that comes out to the point around the Lexus badge, but has this very aggressive shape to it leading down towards the bottom edge. So it's a very cool design, but now it's time to start it up and hear how it sounds. So let's start it up. Start stop button. Comes into life. We've got comfort access, so the steering wheel pulls out into position to make getting in and out a little bit easier. Obviously, we're quite low. Very snug in the seats here. We've got this very cool display that I'm going to go through in another piece because there is, quite frankly, a little bit too much to talk about right now. We can cycle through different modes. We've got the F settings here. So torque distribution, G4 sensors, we've got all the other settings and things you'd expect to have. We've got a touchpad down here to control all the navigation side of things, so we can pull it to the right, click and pull up the map here. This is all a learning curve for me, so you're uh, learning as I go. You can see we're at Gemka Lexus in Reading. So let's get underway. We've got eight-speed gearbox. Hear the V8 gently rumbling away in the background, which is always quite nice. Unsurprisingly, to start, I've got everything in complete normal automatic driving mode settings. We've got this little dial here next to the gear stick, which, if we turn it once, rotates us into Sport S mode. So you get a new look to the dials and interface. It adjusts the power steering and the engine and gearbox settings as well. If you turn it one more, you get into Sport Plus mode. Everything gets even more aggressive looking on the dials there and just firms up a little bit more as well, unsurprisingly. You can also go to the left, which goes into Eco mode, all about efficient driving and everything along those lines. If we press it again, back into normal. Along with these, you've got a ton of things you can go through on the left-hand screen as well. It's pretty uh, extensive list of different things we can look at. I'll keep it on that, the tyre pressure mode, which also shows me the rear wing position as well. So, what else do we have? We have the torque vectoring differential button. Obviously, torque vectoring differential is all about powering up the outside wheel on the turn to give you a little bit more grip and ability to get round corners. So that's the only sort of expensive option on this car. It's a three and a half thousand pound option on top of either the £61,000 base or the £68,000 if you get the carbon version, which has all of the carbon roof and extra pieces as well. Um, so if you press that once, 
goes into slalom, there's an indicator on the dial to show us that, and if you press it again, we're into track mode. Um, so not necessarily wholly appropriate for the uh, town streets we're in here. Um, but it's it back to go into standard, and uh, all is normal, but that will just help a little bit of driving feel and experience and get extra performance around the corners um, from that option. We've got all things like adaptive cruise control, um, obviously the Mark Levinson Hi-Fi, um, nice trims, fit and finish. It's a pretty comfortable place to be as well in here, which is cool. Um, to control all of this, it's all done through this touchpad. You can see just moving around a little bit here. Um, and then you go around down to the different settings. Um, I'll play through all of this as well when I'm uh, back at the dealer and able to take a proper rest. Um, seat heating, seat cooling as well. No shortage of options in here. Um, and we've got some uh, paddles of course, paddles very like the LFA. Uh, I've got it in full drive at the moment so I haven't experienced pressing them and seeing what options we've got. But that in fifth gear. Um, I like that you've got the digital screen for the rev counter. Um, that's pretty cool. Obviously the speedo down at the right as well. Very comfortable, and the, the clock here, it's a nice little finish, an analog clock in the centre of the dashboard. Also just taking a quick look at the display, we've got the temperature up top, you can see it's 7 degrees, it's not exactly warm today. And then oil and water temps, and of course the fuel level right underneath that. From a cruising point of view, what we're doing at the moment, it seems pretty nice to me, the steering wheel has good feel. forward to getting somewhere a little bit more open. Around the interior we have a whole lot of buttons to do different things. We've got the memory seats on the door, mirrors, all the controls over the steering wheel, the air conditioning type stuff here. You've got a nice touch sensitive jog dial here for the temperature, uh, dual mode, single of course, touch pad, but it's all very nicely put together. The interior trim and sort of quality and feel, especially the steering wheel, is uh, really, really quite good. Ride. We've been going over some bumps and the ride quality seems pretty impressive to me. It's not overly hard at all, which I quite like, especially if you're used to uh, some significantly more violent cars. And we've got lots of technology, like if I start drifting over the lane, it will immediately start beeping with the lane guidance at me there. Very quick response on that one. We've also got stuff like um, blind spot monitoring on the door mirrors as well. Um, lots of that kind of tech, which is all standard on the car, which is all very nice too to have. So it's a sports car with all of those luxuries as well, uh, which is great. Now, in the V8 there, obviously still in drive mode and none of the settings are turned up. So let's put it into sport and start using the paddles to change gears a little bit. Second gear. valve controlled, getting more noise the further I'm pressing down on the throttle. We've also got a little uh, icon on the dash that shows us that the rear wing is up as well now. Let's drop it down a few gears and get a little bit more of the noise. You definitely notice a lot more of the power up at the top end of the rev range as well there. It looks like the um, rev limiter I think is slightly variable as well with the setting you're in so if you're in Sport Plus it's increased slightly to 7300 rpm or so. That dial is actually really quite cool the Sport Plus settings we've got and then if I use the right jog dial I can go into the F mode and lap timer, history, torque distribution would be a fun one to have a look at and see what's going on. Very gracious with its power. There's no massive sort of kick or unpleasant uh, feeling as you go through the power range. Uh, just takes perhaps a little bit of time to get moving. I think um, dropping down the gears.
guys if you sort of think going all the way down to second at 40 miles an hour here. I have ever driven is actually an LFA, which was a truly fantastic experience out in California. That car makes such an insane noise. But I think this actually follows it up really quite well. I'm, I'm quite impressed. I wasn't expecting um, quite so much, I think, from the car. Uh, but it's a really good drive. And I think the one thing that's slightly bothering me is if you move lanes, so if you're on a dual carriageway and you move lanes from one to another, without indicating. It does ping away at you with that lane guidance, but there's a button to uh, turn that off and get rid of it if you don't want it to do that at you. I guess the obvious upside is if you're drifting lanes without realizing, you know about it very quickly. Uh, but I love all the settings. I love the dials. I love the continuation of the round screen that's moved over from the LFA and other models. Uh, the V8 sounds really quite good. And if I put down the window slightly, side get a bit more of the noise yeah not bad not bad at all which is quite good quite what you want from a sort of car that you can easily drive all the time no worries it's very easy to position this car we can see the entirety of the bonnet out in front it doesn't feel overly wide or anything unpleasant or uncomfortable at all really like the colour as well, the blue. Lots of reminders of that you can see in the door mirror. The shapes on the inside of the mirror housing there that funnel the air through the rear and over the back. And we've got the spoiler up still as well, uh, which you can just see at the base of the rear window. I haven't tried sitting in the back, but from what I can see here, looking over to my side, there's not a lit, there's not short of space. It sort of looks quite easy to fit somebody in there. Maybe not for the longest of journeys, but it is a two plus two, but shouldn't be too bad. Seating position is just pretty comfortable and all round good. It's sort of what you want from this kind of car, really. Time for something that's always a little bit amusing. I've never used the navigation system in this car before in my life. I'm going to have a go at setting myself to get back to Gemka Lexus Reading. So I've got the address on my phone. Let's head through destination, address, so far so good. Put town, put in Reading moves around with some sort of haptic feedback and just brings up just the letters that could feasibly be next. Red Ing, so I've taken that quite quickly. And Street, into Rose Kiln Lane. So far, trouble free. Sort of more fun when you get lost doing this and the struggle to get it right. But, um, that was not difficult at all. And I think I just click once more and we go. Right, <laughs> that was incredibly easy. Let's follow that back to the dealership. Ah, need to click start. There we go. The route guidance will start now. Attention, In three quarters of a mile, slow traffic. I have noticed also that it alerts me to speed cameras, which is quite nice thing to have as well, especially here in England. Especially if you're driving a near on 500 horsepower sports car. So back in auto mode, which you can do by the way, right is manual, back to the left puts you back into automatic on the gearbox and we've got the eight speed shift box. So obviously we're always going to be in very high gears, changes with the different settings. I think if I put it in eco, I'm expecting it will constantly have us in the super highest, most efficient economical gearbox setting it can possibly be. The navigation has actually just told me to come off this road, that there's traffic ahead. Good to know, good it's got that built in. Uh, it was quick to navigate, brought up a message letting me know. It's funny in the eco mode with the blue dials you get as a result. 
So we get the little navigation commands on the display here as well, which is good, I guess, if you're playing with music or changing settings or something, you get that little mode popping up, which is always helpful. I really, really quite like this dashboard setup, the way it brings in that metal ring display. Left in the roundabout. Take a second exit. Pleasant enough, tells us what we're doing. This car's still pretty new, just 631 miles on the odometer. But for this kind of driving, and obviously we're not going flat out, we're not on a racetrack, we're not using all of the available performance, just driving around town, it's really perfectly comfortable um, and quite enjoyable as well. Um, I'm Next impressed. Ride. Wasn't expecting to enjoy the car quite so much, which is always a nice position to be in. Well, we're here on the hill. The uh, handbrake is operated by a foot pedal. You press once to engage and once to disengage, and obviously, automatic gearbox, it pulls away forwards afterwards. In half a mile, straight on at the roundabout, take first exit. A little bit of reading traffic later, and we are back at Gemka Lexus. You have arrived at your destination. The route guidance is now finished. The sunshine has come out here at the dealership and the Azure Blue RCF is looking gorgeous. I have to say my expectations weren't too high at the start of the day. I mean, Top Gear recently weren't particularly keen. Clarkson didn't even let the Stig take the car around the track. I have to say my expectations were definitely exceeded. Driving the car in that sort of fashion, UK countryside roads, town roads, normal kind of driving, sounds good, drives brilliantly, very smooth soft ride all round enjoyable drive so I'm quite impressed I like to try it on the limit you know on the track pushing the cars it's quite a heavy car though it doesn't feel it the steering's light enough and uh, gentle enough for normal driving but of course a big thanks to Jemka Lexus here in Reading who allowed me to come down and test drive the car. I'll pop in the links below to their social media pages. Please do go check them out, Facebook, Instagram and the like. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that sort of first look at driving the RCF, you know, my first time out in the car, driving it, some impressions from real world experience, what it's like behind the wheel. So thank you very much for watching and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers which is a touch sensitive control for doing temperature and it also shows on the navigation screen there as yeah. well. And then we're going to go inside for that one, the Mantis Green new Shmi Mobile 6. <laughs> <laughs>